Hello, church, and welcome to 28 Days, the 2024 edition of Prayer and Fasting. We're going to break down the book of Matthew, and I got Matthew chapter 1. And I remember when I was talking about putting something together for this chapter, I kind of chuckled to myself. Um, oh boy, genealogies. But we, we need to remember the intentional things that are happening here in this book. Because simply put, Matthew 1 and Matthew as a whole was written to establish the validity of Yeshua as the Messiah, the Savior, written to the people of that day who knew what a messianic claim required. So first off, we see that he descended from Abraham. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make you, I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. That's Genesis 12, two and three. Second, we see he descended from King David. When your days are complete and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your descendant after you will come forth from you and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. That's in 2 Samuel 7, 12 and 13. Also, an important reference here is Isaiah 9, 7. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. So, when you're looking at the genealogy, it's important to remember that these names were important to the Jewish people of the day. And that is who this book was written to. But when we take it further, we get out of the genealogy and we get the, the circumstances of Yeshua's birth. And Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but she was found to be pregnant. And it was, we all know that it's, you know, the virgin birth is like the biggest thing in the messianic prophecy that has come to fruition. Isaiah 7, 14, an angel, I'm sorry, uh, Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. So an angel comes to Joseph in a dream and Joseph, Joseph did as the angel of the Lord commanded and he stays with Mary. And this is what leads to Emmanuel being born, God with us, the deity, God with us, and the humanity, God with us. And Joseph is his legal father. So this is Jesus' legal ancestry to satisfy those requirements that were needed in the genealogy to make him in the line of David, in the line of Abraham. These promises kept and fulfilled prophecies were the arguments to show that Jesus was the valid Messiah, to show these people that Yeshua meets all this criteria and to explain why he checks the boxes for people that did not yet recognize him as the true Messiah. But now, we as believers in Yeshua, saved by his work on the cross, born again, new creations, living now with access to the Father, with the Holy Spirit working and active, our lives can be another argument. Our testimony of being saved from sin and old ways, our lives changed by the transformative power of the gospel, can show people of this day how he is the true, valid Messiah. And then as we grow in knowledge of the word, we can put these two together to understand and marvel how God orchestrated this whole thing. Promises kept, prophecies fulfilled, qualifications met, and we as modern day believers can have understanding of the validity of Messiah in both ways. And our prayer focus for this first day is the salvation of the lost. So as we start this 28 days, I pray that the Father would stretch us and equip us to step out and use our lives to be his light and his witnesses to those around us. So church, take this, be encouraged, be blessed, and I look forward to seeing you guys again.